matchup is that aggressiveness because I don't see anyone in North that's really shown in the past they're willing to go toe to toe with that kind of aggressive aggressive play style. Uh, you're right, it's it's basically config, but either way, we'll see how they handle it. Is it going to be a tactical way to handle the aggression? Are they going to go right at him in terms of manpower? But either way, we're live and underway with the first game of the Legend stage, and it's North on the terror side, pissed around fast, taking control of Sewers, and Mir misses a few shots, misses a lot of shots, and Chopper's been taken down. This is now dangerous. That's very uncharacteristic. Although Flash Touch is still going to pick up the kill. Kashenda turning in and now finally a bit of a return here as Config will take down her. So it's still a 2 on 3. That's AZ gone. Mere instant shot with that USP. He recovered his senses. He came back <laughs> yeah. to himself. He finished his coffee perhaps. <laughs> well, here's Valdi now. No bomb. That's on Config Ooh. and that's a good goosh. That forces JR back. He can't get aggressive. He can't stop this bomb from entering into this site. His teammates are on the rotate. Baldi's going to push up and get aggressive. He's got to control the space. They're rushing out, though. Kashender's found config, and Baldi gets one more. It's down to JR with just 12 HP, and Baldi with the reaction is going to take him down. That's almost unbelievable. Valder actually failed to cover his teammate, but then sort of turned it around into a double kill. Yep. And if, if JR had not already started the rotation around, if he had just come up the bank like he is here, he probably could have shot Valder in the back. I mean, that's all, you know, perfect 2020 hindsight, but still, yeah. what, a, what an incredible shot of events. I actually think Vega had the right idea. Like, they, they would have won that round, I don't know, nine, nine times out of ten, probably. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. I, that's also kind of the, the... Those are the kind of plays where I think teams get really uncomfortable playing them, is how fast they just go. They get up those stairs and two players push through. Majority of the time, you'll see teams just patiently set up, wait for the bomb to get planted. Look at this. All of them in a line. Five men stacked right outside of the restrooms. They don't have a flashbang, which obviously annoys me to no end, but who knows? I mean, this is one of those situations where you could overpeak if you're on the T side. You see one and you think, all right, I'll take this fight. And there's actually five people there. And well, <laughs> Sal is no more. He's going to call it retreat. Don't go. It's not worth it. Oh, Cajun is sticking his ground. This is so dangerous right now. He's going to do a great job cleaning him up. Pickling out the pistol there. It's going to be three kills with the Mac 10 and the Ace coming in for Cajun B. So. It's a really good start, but that, that is dangerous. Well, that's where you'd want them to have the flashbang, right? They just got that first, uh, they get the first kill when he peeks the corner, and then you toss that one flashbang up towards Fountain. You have all the rest of North there waiting, uh, and you can punish them, maybe catch a couple players blind at the Fountain. So um, that, that would have been the nice thing. Either way, here's a, you guys are in for a treat once we uh, get underway with this technical pause. I don't want to reveal it quite yet. Keeping, uh, keeping the audience waiting, uh, yeah. guessing. Build yeah, the anticipation. Yeah, we do have a bit of a tactical brawl, so just just stay with us, and, and we'll be we'll be good to go in a second here. But not a bad start from North at all. I mean, they're going to be excited about uh, about winning that round. It's you can sort of see. I mean, this is actually one of the one of the challenges I think of playing higher level Counter Strike is, you know, the first guy comes through the corner in MSL, he has to make a call to his teammate, yeah. right? And he either has to say, you know, just you got to fall back or you got to stay you know, stand your ground and fight. And you can tell between Cajun and the next player, maybe Valder. Um, you know, it's not entirely clear between those two what the plan is, right? One sort of falls back a bit, one sort of stays. Like, it's it's not 100% coordinated. And that's all you need if you're Vega. Like, just one opening where they make a tiny mistake. I mean, if they all peek around the corner, it could be, could be bad. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a danger. Especially, I think, if they had, like, just like some P250s or, like you said, a flashbang. Some kind of tool to use that was just more than USPs. The other the other side of that is Cajun's going to be loving that. He got three kills with the MAC-10. The Alpers got plenty of money in the bank. He's sitting at 6K while the rest of his teammates are down right around 3,000. So he's got doubled He's doubled up on their cash, uh, which is all very, very nice. Yeah, Cajun is such an interesting Alper, I feel like. Um, he's definitely not the flashiest Alper. Like, I don't think of him... As someone you know who's on like the Kenny S scale or Guardian scale, yeah. flicking wildly with the orb, but his positional orping is really powerful. He's a ve he's very smart where he stands, how he moves, yep. and I think he's got a pretty good read on on most other orpers in the game. So even though I don't think he's like as fast, I would still rate him pretty highly in terms of just being hard to deal with. And he's also one of those orpers who. Um is good with the M4. Yeah. He's not a liability if he can't have the AWP like like we've seen with some other oppers in the past. So yeah. um, that's all, that's obviously a very underrated trait uh, in an opper for your team. It's going to be interesting to see how that works out uh, once we get a little bit down the stretch. I mean, he's playing on the T side, so you know you never know if you can find those fights, if it's going to be worth it to try it. I'm just really interested to see how this old is going to play out. I feel like it was. It was such a strange start. I have no idea why Mia missed all those pistol shots. And <laughs> that, at, that was bad, wasn't it? Yeah, like that. That 
that's one of those, you know, you got the first game of the day and you maybe you're not 100% warmed up. I feel like that we almost have to attribute it to that because he has been just a star player. Yeah, it, feel, it feels I feel bad that we caught it on camera as well. We got the whole clip, like the whole 12 <laughs> bullets, and it's just like, oh, this is painful. And after they just hyped him up, he's, you know, the, yeah. the X Factor, the Hyper X X Factor. Um, I guess that could be interpreted both ways, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that really was confirmed. He did recover pretty quickly, though. He had a couple nice shots after that. Yes, he did. Uh, so I think it's AZ's PC that we're just working on. You see him on camera here. Just ready and waiting. They've got those th new shirts on the north side, don't they? They used to be more blue, I think. Now they're now they're yeah, they were, the they were yeah, they were they were darker. Yeah, they've gone. Maybe they're they're on the home jerseys, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they're not home. In fact, maybe they're gonna make it their home, Moses. Have you thought about that? That's not how it works. <laughs> that is not how it works. All right. If you if you insist, Shark Boy. Yeah, I'm. You know what I want to see? I want to see like a Vegas Squadron versus Pro matchup: Sharks versus Bears. Because I do think I do think it was Sponge who post posed a question to me at one point. Would if sharks could fly in the air, would they be able to beat a bear in a fight? I feel like this would be one of those things that figures it out, that solves the issue. All right, maybe there are some photoshops in there. While we're <laughs> waiting for uh, for this technical force to get in the way, we do have a little bit of a video with North, so check it out and we'll be right back with a fix. We're gonna play paintball today. Two teams, three on each. Uh, the rookies against the experienced ones, and it's going to be me, Cajun, and our coach versus AC, uh, MSL, and Config, so it's going to be fun. It's really important to do stuff outside the game with the team. It doesn't matter if we play ping pong or something else. I'm really a competitive person. Yeah, no matter what I do, winning is the most important thing. I think Config is going to be the best in paintball. He doesn't care about anything, so he's just going to run around and shoot everyone. I think I'm going to be the best. I'm going to win today. So the younger team, they like structure and they're lazy, so they don't know what to do. The worst will probably be Philip. I think Kajun is going to be the worst. Has a little body weight, so yeah. He can't run. We have the younger players, the old team, old people can run. That's just it. Whoever wins tonight will have the brain right for the next couple of weeks. down 0-2. Uh, we were bringing the hammer and controlling the pace and then we got to 2-2 two -two, and then they cheated to a victory in the end when we didn't know where they could run on the side because they were it was locked down because of the camera crew but Cajun just uh, he don't care about rules. Some guy on their team decided to cheat the way around and shoot us in the back. Get ugly hair, Roger. He's a <laughs> the best one was probably when I shoot uh, Philip I slipped two times and yeah that was quite funny. Yeah, it was a, a lot of fun. In the end, the best team won, so. Obviously a successful team building exercise for the North <laughs> team, everyone coming out intact. That was back at Elite Premiers, so uh, a little while ago that they managed to go through that course, but um, yeah, definitely important. All still mates. All still mates. I feel like we got like, um, you know, the idea there was that one player just raising his hand saying, please referee, help, yeah. help. That's, that's what Daisy's going through right now. <laughs> it is indeed. 
So there we are, all the way back in uh, March. Is it, is, it, is it really that long ago? I feel like it was just yesterday that they uh, they managed to get this up and running. Yeah, I thought so as well. That is craziness. Yeah. All right, well, um, I mean, look at the, these placings. I think obviously the, the big thing is this kind of lineup, a bit more excitement around it um, after their victory at Epicenter in 2016, and then it just hasn't seemed to have panned out the way they would have liked. I don't think they've had nearly as much of success as, as this roster, as this organization, um, as you'd think they'd have if you looked at the roster on paper. I do think Valdi is one of the coolest pickups that we had uh, last yes. year, though. I, I agree, but I would, add, I would add to that that the way that he's being played right now, or at least up until uh, this point, we don't know about today, but um, I would say going into this tournament, he's been played in a way that we haven't really seen like his peak. Yeah. I'd say we've only seen like 70% out of what Valdi could probably do. Um, yep. that, there's, there might be a lot of reasons for that, but I, I always notice that when I watch them play. He's well. I think part of the problem is he's so valuable in, in terms of like the the intangible things, in terms of like knowledge of how to rotate, of how to properly support people. Um, I think the the big issue is um, he's got so much skill as well that you know you don't often get to see it shine because he's focusing on the other things and he and he's a big important piece of the North puzzle. Yeah, that could be a little bit of an issue, right? So so essentially, he might be a more impactful player. He might be. He might get even more kills if he's in a situation where, you know, he's like the star player of the team, but they can't really afford to let him be that because they need all the, the rest of the glue that he, he provides. So that's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> provides a lot of glue, that guy. There we go. <laughs> yeah, he's, a... he's putting it all together. <laughs> Why not? We should be heading live with the game just about any second now. Obviously, if you are just joining us, then we're just in the third round here. North won the pistol after a bit of a crazy turn of events, and then yeah. they picked up the second round pretty easy with uh, a lot of Mac 10 kills from KGMB leading the, ace. In the third round here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he had the ace as well. It's a cool stack, and I hope Vega Squadron still goes for the surprise that I mentioned in the past um, before the uh, before the small break went out. But they have a very cool thing coming, hopefully. Yeah, I've seen them vote to resume. It's already passed here, so countdown has begun. We'll see, Moses. You're going to get they're your doing wish. It. Oh, they're doing it. The third round by. You don't see it often. You don't see it too frequently. They did change it up, though, actually. The the previous time, they'd had two UMPs purchased, so someone changing their mind going for the FAMAS. They did that so that they could have more players with utility. As you can see, Hunchy's the only one with nades. So why don't people do this normally, Moses, for new viewers? What's going on? Well, you obviously are, are missing some of the firepower. Normally, there's an extra saver. Normally, as well, on the CT side, you're, you're buying some kind of pistol armor in the second or third round, some deagles or anything like that. Look at this fast-paced player. They're going to see JR. He's going to spot that out, and he's going to fall back. Yeah, doesn't want to take that fight. Crescenda playing all the way close. He's going to get run down by MSL. A little bit unfortunate, and he will get a good return kill at least. JR to get the headshot on MSL now. That leaves here along the bomb site. Easy pickup kill there, and the bomb has now been dropped. So a little bit of an issue. They have to commit north. They're going to get the kill. The spray comes through. Valda with a great prediction, taking down Chopper. That's a really important kill. Otherwise, if Chopper stays alive, then that's going to buy time for Haji to walk in now. He's a bit late to the party, and he only has the MP9. So for him to win this round, almost impossible. He needs to pick up a different weapon at some point if he can. This is really clever by North, though. Falling back towards Long, just pausing and being patient. They don't want to get caught off guard. They don't. They know that they need to find this remaining player before they commit to something. And Hutchie's actually going to go for the information. AZ's waiting for this. There's the peak. He wins it, and he spots the other player. Molotov to slow him down, and he transitions into the UMP. Goes for the peak and gets the intel. Now the hunt is on. That's such a big play. The timing is perfect. Now swapping out for the m4 valdez coming back around with only about 27 seconds hutchie's playing this so well he's got the one kill he just needs to hatch on the timing is off by a second he gets it anyway hutchie to pick up valder and vega the investment it is returned immediately that was a big round here for them uh, that's huge what a big big clutch for hutchie to win you can see there that sequence why valdi such a strong player always aware looking for the next player having the knowledge the game sense that someone else is going to be a truck and unfortunately loses out this peak to hutchie that's brilliant, but hey, listen, the gamble hasn't paid off just yet because they have to string them together. They're still on the verge of getting their money just reset immediately. And just, I think he was on 84 health or something, Valder. And that's a big difference from being on 100 health when you've got the M4 on your hot cheek. You yeah. really want to get that one kill headshot. So even the fact that he was just slightly tagged makes a bit of a difference in that 1v1. MSL going for the early shot, not able to connect, but 
Definitely worth it if you know someone's making that jump. Now they're all stacked up. They've got the grenades and they want to go fast and hard through the smoke. MSL, in fact, first one in the bomb side, trying to wrap around and looking for the opening. He's going to get one. They're really out of position right now on the Vegas side. Hutchie still able to pick up a kill. And they did get the rotation in. So again, we're in a two on two. Oh, this is wild. That was so, so fast. There's the UMP kill. The bomb is down. It's just Valdi again in a one on two. Kashander's low, though. Molotov's going to stop him. And there's the peak from Hutchie. Closes out Valdi another time. And Vega Squadron not caught off guard by the quick pace set from north. It's, I would actually say they probably were cut off guard, but I think through through just sort of random timing, when MSL flanks around, he kind of he actually has to run so far in the bomb site, like he doesn't find anyone that he can actually shoot until he's all the way over by almost, you know, the sort of entrance to be. Like, it's really odd. Normally, I think you would have found someone a bit earlier, and that means the stretch is so far that everyone on Vega knows what's going on by then. So, like, it's a, bit, a little, bit, little bit odd, you know? I think they were caught off guard north by the the fourth player that rotated Oh, back. yeah, definitely. Because there were three players there already, and by the time MSL's wrapping around the bombsite and getting his first kill, there's a fourth player, I think that was JR, coming through the smoke from the A bombsite, so pretty tough for them. Shander's going to be the first point of contact and spraying down through the smoke. He's got one. JR's covering his back as well. Yep. There's no gaps in this defense. This is very nice from Vega for the moment. And even more, I mean, this is a little detail, but the fact that Kashanda doesn't even look right back behind him. He knows JR is going to be there, so he's not even worried about someone like that. Love seeing that. And this is looking great for them. It was down to a two on two the previous round, so if you're Vega, you want to make sure you win this round with as many people alive as possible. And that's going to be successful. Everybody making it through. Kashanda with a quad kill. And just like that, we're on a three on two here. So three versus two for the scoreline here. Eight kills on Kashanda currently. That's impressive. And zero on AZ. Which is not ideal, obviously. I think still you have to you have to point to someone like Hachi winning that 1v2 in that third round where Vega Squadron bought. That is the impact round so far for Vega Squadron that's allowed them to get up to this lead. So that's quite nice. Still don't have an off out on JR on the defensive side. Cajun's going to bring his out for the first time. You imagine North would want to slow this down. They had that very fast execute towards the beep off site. Molotov deep. Here's the aggression from Mir, but I think he's actually just going to give it up doesn't want to challenge it. Probably not necessary either. Just the fact that you've shown yourself, and at least I could hear out of the corner of my ear the North were communicating quite a bit, just, you know, even just calling in the grenades. So now they have to actually spend time clearing everything. And this is this is great because this is that, that specter that Vega has created with all the aggression they've done throughout yes. the previous stages is all the teams looking into them. North, who's had, you know, four or five days to kind of watch and study some of these demos are just saying just be careful about the aggression so all of a sudden they haven't even really aggressed onto the other side of the map and there's just over a minute remaining so vega's done a good job of having that that specter of aggression just kind of slow down and waste time on the north side of things it means there's 55 seconds left and still north are just making their way to the half point of the map. Checking all the corners, really worrying about where they might be set up. Cajun sneaking in. Kashenda's playing the close angle there, so if he gets in trouble, we'll have to see if JR can put in a flashbang to help him out, because that is going to be important. He's playing on the bomb side himself now. A little bit of a jump up, and JR, he spotted them, and immediately Mir runs back. Look at the communication here on Vega. Look at Chopper as well, pushing right through the smoke and monster. He's going to catch AZ on the side. Does he get that kill? Doesn't matter. Kashander's been blinded. They haven't cleared him out, though. There goes JR and Kashander just barely not able to make anything happen. Volley checks it and takes him down, and Mir gets caught on the truck. This has worked out beautifully for North. A slow-paced round, and all the kills go their way. Chopper going to go down. I wish I could go back and replay some of the key parts in this round. So Chopper misses AC by a millisecond. Like if he's if he's just, you know, a little bit earlier in that tunnel yeah. down at B, we didn't see it on camera, but you can see it on the minimap, he would have killed AC for sure. And Kashenda becomes unflashed, and MSL actually doesn't check yeah. that corner. And then Valde checks it as the second man in. So there were so many, like, split-second timings that could have worked out for Vega. I'm not trying to make excuses for them. I'm just saying right. a lot of that round was just a bit of a coin flip almost. That's a, that's crazy. Great job on North. Really impressive. And, you know, the style obviously where We see the problem here with MSL. He is he's one second from death when that happens. Uh, yeah, and it's it's actually funny because the, the fact that he doesn't check that corner means he's able to get that first kill, that kind of entry. So his mistake leads to some success. There There is always one guy on a team that checks every corner no matter how many people run past it. We love having those teammates, and apparently for North it's Valdi. 
Because if is yeah. allowed to go unchecked, if they just assume he's not there because MSL didn't die, then he gets a double, maybe a triple kill, and turns that round on its head. No, you're absolutely right. For uh, for Astralis, it's always sit. I've noticed. It's just that guy. It always comes back to Astralis with you, doesn't it? Well, I mean, they are going to win the Major Moses, so <laughs> might as well talk about them. <laughs> oh, don't do this to me. We'll see, we'll see. Third, oh sorry, third round for each uh, team. Seventh round overall is where we're at. And now JR's got the AWP, so I'm really curious about this. This is actually something I've been looking forward to a little bit, Cajun versus JR, just to see how that's going to work out. Because his orping has definitely been on point, JR. We saw the stats just in the qualification stage, and he was out of control. Shatter's got a big way to play. There's the kill, but it's not effective enough. MSL, another opening kill for him. Thankfully, Chopper on the other side of the map is able to even things out, but he's taken a lot of damage. Ooh, they've not checked for Mir. He should be able to get an easy enough kill. He's actually waiting just a second. Maybe he wanted to hear if anyone else was there. And now look at Chopper down by that sewer. He's in a great position. Should be an easy kill. Goes for the spray and does pick up Valde. A little bit of hesitation there. So the round has kind of fallen apart here. And I'm wondering, easy, what was his role going through the smoke down in that monster tunnel? I'm just not sure. This is going to be tough here for Cajun. Chopper not looking that direction, and this shot's going to seal it, and they'll be able to salvage it. That's a couple times. I think that's something that uh, AZ is going to have to start adjusting towards, because remember, the previous round, Chopper had you know gotten aggressive through that smoke and monster to kind of try and flank around, and we just mentioned that he had missed him by a second. But if there's going to be action on A, and Chopper's going to be aggressive at B, pushing through the smoke, whether it's monster, whether it's short, whatever it might be, AZ's got to adjust to that and be aware. But as far as I could tell, AZ was the one pushing through the smoke down and beat. Oh, I think so. Maybe we can get that on replay. That because I don't understand. They actually won the fight against up in restrooms. So his his plan, if, if he's pushing through a smoke, what he's saying is if there's enough attention on bathroom, someone's rotating, I'll be able to have a one-on-one -on -one duel, yeah. find a fortunate timing, and gain ground over towards B and give them an option to fall back if they need to. And that logic sort of makes sense, but it definitely cost them in that round, you can tell. Now, since everyone is still kind of poor on the Vega side, north of the side, listen, we're going to buy in if we can't quite do it. Chopper picking up amazing kills down in the Monster Tunnel, shutting down Cajun and AZ. And the bomb dropped as well, so whatever buy north had in mind, it's not really working out this round. It's been crushed. Yeah, the bomb down there is so, so damaging for any effort that north wants to have. They're going to start running low on utility as well. They have three smokes and one flashbang. MSL trying to enter in. Chopper's very low, but Hutchie's here to back him up. Going to take that fight with Conflict at range, and he's going to win it. Great control. Chopper just wants to live in this round, essentially, so he's just staying hidden. And actually, probably getting some tags in on Hutchie, but they know exactly where he is. A spam battle through the smoke. And both guys coming out even. At this point, again, it's one of those things where they go, why even risk anyone dying? You know Valdi's got to come through that tunnel. You know you just have four people waiting for him. They have really no money at all in the next round north, so it's going to be some space to work with here if you're Vega. I'm so confused about what they were doing in that round. I mean... It did seem like they were a little um, disorganized with, like, coming through Monster Tunnel, because I think, like, two people went and Chopper would just stop to with the bomb, and then everyone yeah. else was very far back. So if you're going to make that kind of a play with the bomb leading the way, it almost feels like you might as well... I mean, he did get aggressive, to be fair. I think the and bomb actually... A bang for him. Yeah, I think the bomb actually just fell farther than we expected. It seemed like it, but also, great job on the flashbang. So that means yep. even though Chopper was essentially facing two enemies, only one of them could see anything, and he killed that guy first. So, yeah, that was a good little detail to get on camera there. Five, three, and the ninth round coming up here. Great stuff from Vega Squadron early on. Now they're finally starting to build a bit of money behind these wins, because they've got the rounds in, which is great news. They just needed to build a bit of a bank, and they finally have, so... And they're going to be probably even more of one now. JR's out towards Long with his AWP. He would love to have some of these blocks just run at him. Warm up the old sniper rifle. Get a couple confidence kills in you. Either way, not, I mean, this is... At this point, as the bonus money builds up, North doesn't even want to want to risk the investment of what they can have in that next buy. Their next buy has to be very good. They need to start finding some actual success in this game with their gun rounds. They've only won one. Here's JR, and actually he's dinked up. He actually let MSL get very, very close. Yeah, a bit uncomfortable. So is that. Convict picking up a kill. Kashanda's had enough, though. Doesn't, doesn't want to deal with this any longer. It's been too much. That was the one P250. All they have to really worry about is salvaging that AWP. AZ shouldn't be able to do a whole lot. 
delivery, and now he's been spotted out, trying to take a bit of a fight, but they're getting real close now, and oh, he hits one more headshot. That's actually not bad at all. Just getting a couple of kills in here in this round definitely makes a difference. There will be another round for Vega, obviously. Did you know, Moses, you can you can sit on the balloon in this map? <laughs> it's true. That was like one of the last things I expected you to say. I thought you were going to start mentioning a, a wall you could shoot through. Uh, there are so many in this map. You can it takes do. like a triple boost or something, doesn't it? Double, but you can, yeah, you can, you can boost someone up on that balloon. Does it have any practical use into the game? Why does it always have to come down to that, Moses? Why can't it just be adventurous and fun? I've been scared of balloons ever since I watched. You've uh, seen that movie Up? You know, maybe you could, maybe you go somewhere with it. Yeah, that was a depressing movie. <laughs> yeah, good topic. Well, here's some aggression into the stairwell. Mir holding an angle. AZ with an opening kill is quite nice. It's on Hunchy, and there's the reaction, and MSL gets it. But it's a stack. There's two more players here, and MSL is able to trade him out. But it is a two on three. Oh, and JR, oh, that would have been a sick shot to hit if he was able to equalize things. And Chopper's left at a one versus three. Yeah, and surely by now they know where he plays. I actually like that, that stack from Vega. I think if JR hadn't had the AWP, he could have held out his teammate a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit of hesitation there on his part. And now Cajun's clearing out the A bomb site, which means Config should be called in to rotate that way, and AZ can just spot for the rotation. This, this should all be pretty good right now. Yeah, phenomenal round from North, handi handling that stack very well. It, it would be cool to know. I mean, AZ getting an opening kill is great towards that B bomb site. And I think that's kind of what caused that stack to lose its effectiveness because you could see the response. One player, I think it was Kashander, immediately started walking down the stairs to get into the action. I think they, they were able to be a little bit more patient. Man, they are playing this round all the way through. <laughs> they have Cajuns cleared up every single thing, and they're finally going to find Chopper, but they really, really wanted to be sure that he wasn't going to be hiding in some strange corner. But yeah, you see the problem is that when Emerson actually goes this deep into the fight, I was kind of expecting that he'd be shot down immediately. And JR obviously was maybe just a bit late there. I just don't think he, I think it just took him longer than we expected him to react because he's obviously yeah. watching for the presence coming towards party, towards your, your little balloons. Um, and he just didn't turn around in time. If it was an M4, I think it would have been quicker just because the M4... Yeah, I'm, I want to point out another little map feature because they were up on those shelves down there at the connector. Yeah. And they boosted up there. You can just jump up there from the stairwell. You don't actually... You can just be on the stairs and jump up. You don't need to do anything crazy. You don't have to take any fall damage. It's real easy. Everyone should do it. Learn it. <laughs> well, speaking of crazy, a nice nade brings Config down to about 57. Saw Mir and Chopper looking like they wanted to get aggressive towards short, which at this point feels like it'd be a bad idea considering Valdi's position. There's a pop flash peak. You can't do a whole lot of those as this round goes on. There's not a lot of utility on the Vega squadron side. They're really relying on these two AWPs, Hunchy and JR. JR's back at A, Hunchy's in the B bomb site. Thanks. Shooting the balloons. Gotta talk to your boy, Anders. Yeah, what's up with that? Just ruining all opportunities in this round. Just ticking past the minute mark. JR's gonna be creeping over the AWP. Oh no, the light post took it. That's a hero light post. Yes, yeah, better than Kevlar apparently. <laughs> Flashbang in. This is almost, this is part of the course on this map. You actually have to flash that corner. And it's kind of shocking how many pro teams don't do it, but it's a good job on North that they did. Yeah, North is being very, very clinical in this matchup at the moment. See how this aggression is going to follow up. They know config is out towards long. There's plenty of audio cues. The bomb is going to rotate back towards the B bomb site. It's just Chopper and Hutchie here. Hutchie's got that AWP, but he's out in the open. If he doesn't get a pick, he's going to be so dead. And that's exactly what happens. The ops missing. I mentioned they were going to rely on those AWPs, and if they don't land their shots, it's just pointless. Chopper's been doing a great job so far, but it's just so many angles for him to deal with. Mia coming in really quick, in fact, but from us, no one seems to be... Oh, well, AC was covering, I was just about to say. There's a bit of worry in my mind there, but it worked out just fine. I honestly can't explain how Hachi missed that shot. That was that was a moment of, of sort of distilled disappointment for me, Moses. I just couldn't handle that. Yeah, that, I mean, that could have made the round very interesting if he's able to get that one pick and see that it's coming, and then you have two defenders at the beat bomb site. That would have been a, a really fun scenario to, to see. But either way, missed shot doesn't allow it to happen. And it just goes back. I mean, North has just done such a good job of denying map control, the flashbang out towards long in that doorway to get the opening kill. They've actually done a pretty good job of getting the opening kills, I feel. AZ's had a couple, MSL's had a couple. Uh, that round with the flashbang peak into, into the bathrooms. Yeah, and it, uh, MSL is 
kind of a strange player on this team, I feel like, because we've obviously we've obviously had many many a nights where we've been laughing at how bad MSL has been playing this game. But then, <laughs> but then, don't wait, don't don't stick me, don't lump me in with whatever right. group you're involved in. All right, all right. <laughs> no, but but I actually but that but I, but I was about to say I was about to turn it around, Moses, and say it's been a really long time since we've been able to do that. And in fact, he's had he's had some unbelievable games where where suddenly he looks like he's the star player, and it's really hard to explain because you know. In your gut, you feel like that's not supposed to happen, and then he's sort of doing it anyway. And that I actually think that's that's maybe where North can really surprise a lot of top teams. Is that if MSL is having one of those days, then what are you going to do? You know, that's a big if. That's a big <laughs> if. You say that. I mean, he did have his week where he changed his sensitivity, and it was the it was the glorious MSL era. What yeah. event was that again? That was. We're still in the MSL era, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying. <laughs> You've lost your mind. You have like four eras going on at the same time. Tarry era. <laughs> Listen, it's good. It's good to have a bit of culture every once in a while. Though. So <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Man, four men stacked down there. They do have the AWP. A bit of a huge stack, in fact. They're smoked off for the moment. This is utter chaos. Somehow Chopper gets a kill, but they are getting sandwiched in. JR's hiding inside of the smoke with the only AWP that they really desperately wanted to save. He's going to pick up the kill on AZ. Bomb plant has happened. He sees the legs and. So I'm kind of shocked that Cajun didn't check for that. Now, Bomb ticking away, and JR, I think he just wants to get out. Just steal this AWP away, try and see if you can sneak away. He's gonna try and bait it out with a pistol and takes down Valder. This is very interesting, and now he actually has his escape. He could just run away, and that's what he's gonna do. That That's actually just a shockingly successful round from Vega. Three kills, save the AWP. Especially considering the AWP was at the B bomb site and they rushed it. Like the fact that he's able to get out, he's gonna go for more. Oh, what a flick! A miss from Cajun B and he goes down. Now Config, I think he wants to go over and get that off for his team. Takes some bomb damage, but overall, North has done a great job. Six to six, they've recovered quite nicely. There was some danger where Vega had won six of seven rounds in a row, and North is now on a three round win streak, so they're gonna be quite happy with that, and Vega's gotta get back to their winning ways. Yes, they do. Three in a row, a little bit too much. Definitely impacts their economy. It's great that they managed to get those kills in the round. I mean, that's there. you're always going to be happy doing that. Save the AWP. So they've got pretty good utility. This is a nice buy out of them. If they can win the last three here, I think they'll be pretty satisfied. This is going to be tough, though. MSL, he knows he's got two SMGs. He's just going for the uppercut, just going for the B-Rush. And it's just Chopper here. Molotov is put out. Here's Chopper close up with a flashbang, gets one. They now have the intel, but all four players from Vega are on the other side of the map. JR is rotating downstairs with an AWP. That's not going to be easy to manage unless Valdi peeks right into it. Caught off guard, and now it's on. Now it's definitely on. You said it, a bit of an uppercut, and... Did work out brilliantly on the bomb side. Now the grenades are in. They still have another smoke, and that one Molotov on config could be huge. There's a gap in the smoke. Are they even realizing that? Kashenda could get an easy kill if anyone walks into it. The bomb has been planted here, and config waiting. He's got the grenades. That's what I'm waiting for right now. Cajun is going to be smoked off, but that's not really a great smoke either. He could see right over it. Flashbang is in his eyes, and he can't do anything. Kashenda gets the kill, follows up on config. Now AC, they're all around him. The retake has happened. Vega definitely on with the kit and everything that was such a great start to the round for north and then just slips apart yeah that's a that's a brilliant retake well obviously even though chopper only gets one kill and falls he's able to call out the numbers right he sees a lot of players uh and then obviously and then because of that vega's able to take so much ground in other portions of the map jr is very quickly ready for that peak from valdi and valdi's not prepared for an op to be holding the angle but it's a brilliant retake it's everyone from vega basically just dumping their utility into the bomb site when you have that much that many flashbangs that many smokes to throw on a retake even if they're not perfect as we saw with the smoke they're still effective cajun has just dodged like two flashbangs and he's not ready for the third one to come out surely at some point it ends and completely blinded he gets dropped Shenda pushed very close, flashbangs are in. He can't really see anyone, I've no idea why. Hiding in the shadows, it seems. Convic picking up at a couple of kills. That's very weird. He must have had way more flashbang on his screen than, than we realize. I think it was just because the because the way that the tree throws the shadow on him, he just wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I guess. Either way, Hachi's now isolated and alone at this B bomb site. AZ's gotta be careful. Oh, the, the timing, that is heartbreaking for Hutchie. He could have had it. That's tough, but a this, great call from North, a very decisive call from North. This happened so many times in this game already, where just, you know, sort of random timings come out. 
a little bit strange. Chopper and JR probably just have to try and save what they can here and get some good kills in. They just don't have the money to rebuy. So North have really done a good job keeping the economy low, even if they've been losing rounds. And that, that shows towards the end stage of the first half here. Yeah, this is a good response. And JR and Chopper saving these weapons. North, I like this call. They should be all out on the hunt for these guns because JR can drop a weapon if he's able to stay alive and still have money. Baldi's in great position. I don't think Chopper's appropriately covering JR. He's getting into position now, and now he's finally got it. There's the headshot from Chopper. JR sees one, but MSL takes him out. Now they just have one remaining to hunt down, but that's a big piece of the puzzle taken away. All right. Who's clapping? It's probably Cajun, isn't it? <laughs> Someone from North. Just excited. Yeah, they're having a good time. Could be could be Wimp or Ave, you know, just to plug that little detail, Moses. They yep. have they have brought the the legends out. Doing everything they can. Is it like a lucky rabbit's foot? They just bring all the old Danish legends in and they're just like so, like certainly they'll bring us some of that championship luck. Dude, I went and said hi to them earlier and for me it did, for me it's like meeting, you know, childhood heroes. So, you know, I, I realize most people probably don't remember, but the more pieces to your childhood I put together, the more depressing it gets. <laughs> That could be true. Cajun sneaked up with the AWP over towards the playground, and Shenda's right on the edge. Good timing here is all he needs. Config's on the other side, and he reads it very well, but he was halfway reloading. Shenda still goes down, but I mean, from us for AK, that might work out. Now, what can they do here with the 15th round? Roth's done a really good job of, of limiting the damage they've taken from the aggressiveness of Vega. I don't even think Vega's used all their kind of aggressive tactics that we saw against G2, for instance. I know they had some some very, very dangerous long pushes with two to three players, and we haven't really seen it in this game. Maybe because of the money. Here's some more timing for you, Anders. MSL's pass, and there's Valdi again checking the angle, even though MSL gets by safely. He does lose the fight. JR's got to rotate back. MSL's going to hear this. So this is dangerous position for JR to be in. He's got to be aware he's not. He has his knife out. That is a massive blunder, and the A bomb site is open for the taking. They thought that MSL was the first one in, or sorry, that, that Valder was. That's why he managed to sneak by. So they actually misinformed themselves by getting that kill. I mean, there's no way to know that, but that's just very unfortunate. Great timing again here. Chopper taking one down. Cajun goes next, so that will be an eighth round here on the board for Vegas Squadron, the end of the first half. So honestly, a very open game right now. I feel like. Not that much had to change for Vega to pick up, you know, 11 to 4 instead of 8 7. Like, I really feel like there were there were many rounds that could have turned out differently, but this is what we end up with. So now it becomes interesting. I think the big challenge that Vega have to deal with, as far as I remember on this map, is Config playing that long. He, okay. he is so hard to deal with. And if they can't find a way to do that, then it's not going to work out well. I, I think that's kind of like the big challenge for playing North on any map, right? Is, is, is how do you handle config when, especially if he's having one of his games? We haven't seen him go off on this one. This has been a pretty well-rounded effort, all things considered from the north side of things. Valdi and config leading the way with 11 and 10 kills. Uh, and MSL actually also has 11. He's switched into, it feels like, coming into this event. They've, they've worked on him being more of an entry player for this yeah. team, and he's done a good job with it. I quite appreciate that, especially if you're going to be the guy sort of, you know, leading leading a lot of the calls. If you go down early, then at least you can focus 100% on that for the rest of the round. Um, so yeah, that's one way to do it, isn't it? Just throw yourself in there. <laughs> Let's see. Second half is going to be coming up. On the other team, Kashenda's actually the one leading the uh, the charge with 15 kills, which is really quite impressive. I mean, we've been looking for Chopper and Mira as like the, the main, the heavy hitters. Yeah. But um, nobody's really falling behind on either team, which is good news. Yeah, no one, no one seems to be having any massive underperformance, and this sets the stage uh, quite nicely into this second half once we get it going. I wonder if North would go for like an Astralis-type pistol round here. They, Astralis do this so much that I wouldn't even be surprised if North would try to copy it, where they push four men to B, and then they push all the way out through the L bend into sewer, and then they're essentially by connector, which means if it is an A push, then all they have to do is back up the one guy playing A. They can run out the connector, be there really quickly. Okay. If it's a B push, they have four people there. It's a really, really solid gamble, and Astralis have been doing it for a long time. Really great success, so I'm, I'm wondering if North would, would want to dare try something similar. There was a really, uh, there was a really cool article published uh, just before the major began, and, and I hope this is accurate. It's by Sam Delorme. 
Del Delo I don't know how to say his name. Um, but it, it's really, really cool how he, he mentions Overpass has gone from a tactical map to a, a CT aggressive based map. So we'll see how that pans out. There's Kashander with, uh, actually, no, it's Hutchie with both kills, but they do a great job of cleaning out the aggression. He continues it forward. Four kills for Hutchie. Responding perfectly somehow. I think they did go for that exact yes. gamble and it gets deleted. It was a little bit different, but it, but essentially the, the, the key tenants were the same. But the real problem is Haji just reloaded one second faster than they were expecting. <laughs> and that was it. Brilliant turnaround for him. That does bring him up to 19 kills. That's just utterly impressive. And Malde can't really do much of anything. Oh, sorry, that was Haji. Sorry, it's a 13 still, but he was at the bottom of the scoreboard earlier. That's really impressive. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who maybe was at the bottom of the scoreboard. This is now two huge impact rounds. Yeah. It almost feels like he, remember, he won that 1v2 clutch in the third round in the previous half. Now he's got four kills on the pistol, shutting down the aggression. So um, that's that's big time plays from a guy who might have been quiet. Otherwise, he's missed a couple big op shots, but he's certainly made up for at least one or two of the mistakes. And Valdi just saving his USP and mostly saving his armor. You can have an easy upgrade to have head armor for only 350 and then buy a deagle you can buy an upgraded pistol if that's the route they want to go so it well, look at vega they're so quick three men running around the corner the two people that are behind them right now don't even get a chance to react i mean they sort of have to run him after the fact so it's just the speed of vega that that throws that pins pincer in that north had sort of set up right they wanted to, it for it to be a bit of a trap so they can just bust open the door and run in and shoot everybody, but it's just too late. Yeah, they had the exact pincer that they wanted, didn't they? It's just, yeah, like you said, a second late. Unfortunate for North. Here's that investment for them in the second round. Valdi, head armor, and CZ. That's a dangerous. He also has good utility. They've got four smokes and two flashbangs. I know that this is kind of interesting. If you look at the minimap, you see Vega taking over the stairs. This is something that Liquid was pretty criticized for in one of their losses, was why are you going into the, the stairwells and the underpass, uh, such narrow corridors, when you know it's going to be a force buyer and eco? Stead North is stacked up here. They've got the grenades in. The flashbangs are through, and they at least get the one kill. Probably wanted a little bit more. Mir's going to creep in, and he almost takes down MSL, who's managed to steal away a UMP, but still four versus four here. And now Vega are put on notice. How are they going to handle that? Actually, they seem to be very decisive. They're not sort of waiting to just think, all right, that's fine. You've got to set up a debate at B. We're just going to go A instead. JR going to walk around this smoke, and Cajun knows it's coming. Peeks out, distract him. JR is technically in a one on two here. Rotate is on, but the rest of Vega has beat them, and there goes AZ. Cajun's got to fall back now, save his life. He's behind a Molotov. He does get a kill, though. We'll see if MSL can do anything with this UMP. He's just very low on health, and. Even though he hit the headshot there, Cajun, JR's still going to live and just run away at this point here. So I think the dangerous part of this round is more or less over for Vega. They should be in a good spot. Config somehow manages to sneak out. Could have been an opening, but they'll clean it up at the end, even if they take a lot of damage. So Vega are going to be happy about that round. I don't think they're going to be too much worried about losing Mir and Chopper. And that will be 10 to 7. A lot of money on Cajun for the upcoming AWP once they can find the next round. And that will be when the true test begins for Vega Squadron. They're going to have an easy one this time. You could see some MAC-10s being bought up. Some of the SMGs, obviously, three MAC-10s and a UMP. They all want the bonus money. And the question always becomes in this kind of scenario is, is if those all survive, how many do you actually upgrade? The way North wants to get a little bit of a USB rush in on the drone. And actually, Dink JR from behind. Great name damage. That's a good opening kill. Still firing away. And actually, North is coming out pretty good in this, all things considered. They're losing players, but... Look at the HP of some of these Vegas squadron guys. They have to come back these guys up. Hutchie can't get away. He's got no health. He's got to just hope they chase him down and his teammates have abandoned him. He's left all alone. Oh no, where's the camaraderie? It's just <laughs> it's torn all, out It's all there. dead, isn't it, Anders? My God, Hutchie goes for the spray and he actually gets a parting kill. Obviously the bomb is going to go down on the B-bomb side here. Mir just didn't want to hang around. That's that's rough, Moses. That's not the, <laughs> that's not the story that we're looking for, is it? Oh, poor guy. That's the AK-47 as well, so they would love to be able to find that. And this has turned out phenomenally for North. They have an AK-47. They get a kill with the MAC-10, so some bonus money. They've taken three, or they've gotten three kills, forced three rebuys, and Mir and Kashander, they don't, they don't want to mess around. They now realize they can be in danger of a defuse coming in until that Molotov lays down. And AZ 
Good idea. He's just hunting for extra bonus money, and he might just get it because Shander not aware. There's the jump around the corner. He is dropped down. And Config is just going to get an extra kill. And the bomb, Mir, is he going to go for the bomb? Yeah, he will. Yeah. There's no way out. So that's a massively expensive round. That was... We usually applaud, and I think for good reason, the aggressiveness of Vega, but once you see that whole firing squad over by the playground, just, just leave him alone. Just yeah. Don't even bother. I, I think the problem was the AK player, I forget who had it, got dinked like immediately. Yeah. And he couldn't get back. So they were like, they were trying to protect the AK, and then eventually they were just like, well, you're on your own, bro. <laughs> Maybe Haji made the call and just said, go on without me. <laughs> I'll be the hero. That's such a good movie moment. moment. Yeah. Could've, just, oh, could've, I can't, could've, I could've can't make it, save yourself. Could have pulled a pin from a grenade and, <laughs> you know, put it under himself and just said, look. That's some predator stuff. Yeah. Four round difference, not really that much at all. Haji flashing his way through, trying to see if he could maybe find an opening on somebody. MSL and AC have managed to push down through the connector, but that's a big opening on Config, taking him down to the B-bomb site. MSL gets dropped next, and that's all gone wrong here. Aldo will come in with a big spray. He needs a bit more. He's going to go aggressive. Maybe a bit too early there. That does give the bomb site to Chopper. What is happening in this round? I think the aggressiveness of Vega has actually caught Vega off guard. They don't have the bomb here at the B site, even though they hold it. Chopper's there. AZ's going to be unfortunate with timing. Obviously expecting the players to actually be in the B bomb site once they've taken it over. Great opening provided by JR with that AWP on a config. You said that was the big battle that they had to take care of. And here on the fourth round, it goes perfectly. And Cajun is hoping someone gives something up. But he knows he can't fight for this. Yeah, and this is probably the smart move. Kind of curious, conflict down on the B bomb side, and I'm even more curious that Valde continued the fight. After he got that first kill, I would have thought he wanted to sort of stick around and just wait for a backup. But he actually goes very aggressive and gets shot down, so a couple of mistakes maybe that round. It's always hard, to, I mean, as that player, because remember, Shander gets a kill essentially, I think, either right after or right before JR gets that, that shot onto Config. And I think if you're Valde in that situation and you've watched two of your teammates go down, you, you never know the timing of when they're coming up. Um, towards sandbags, and he wanted to get that second kill to kind of really, really lock down. If he gets that second kill, this round is still, is still, you know, available for North to fight for. Yeah. But definitely not easy, but this is such a great opening for JR, just instantly reading it. The Molotov is right on top of Config, so it's not even easy for him to sort of, you know, get in and just stand his ground. And the following timing working out here for Mir as well. 12-7. That was the big fire round out of North that they really needed it. And on the back of doing so much damage, they're going to be super upset they can't win the round immediately. Yeah, I can't follow it up. That's unfortunate. They still have the AWP. Now they have the CZs out. Still danger. If Cajun B can provide just an opening, those CZs can really slip into. That would be dangerous. But North at the moment has the misread going on. They're going for the triple boost. And actually, Hunty was looking for it, and Chopper's even looking for it as well. Now they know that two more players are there. That's why they're swinging to take this fight with the AKs. And again, just the aggressive nature nonstop. They identify what's coming, and they have the perfect response for it. Vega's going to get another round. See, that triple boost, the first time we saw it, was, was kind of shocking. Now, I feel like it happens a lot, and, it, and you can tell teams have started to check. I mean, it always should be checked for, right? But I'm amazed that Hachi turning that corner had so much attention on it, yeah. and then Chopper, to follow up, was even looking for it exactly. So they knew what was coming somehow. Op's not working today. No, just firing blanks for a moment. It's going to be a really big lead now for Vega. 13 to 7 is one thing, but it's the money that's really interesting here. They're about to win five in a row, and I mean, that's the round loss bonus up and running, I guess, for North, but uh, still. We've had a couple of technical timeouts. I don't think we've had a tactical one. Oh, what, 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 bloody hell. That is, that's something new. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did he, did he shoot like right between his angles or something? I guess so. Maybe it's a trick shot. <laughs> <laughs> he looks something, confused as well. <laughs> something they had choreographed earlier. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, there's the comparison of the two offers. JR, 14 kills to the aid of Cajun. Yeah, definitely doing a, a better job at the moment. No doubt about that. Chopper setting up for the smoke towards the restrooms and now Six round difference between the two teams. At least North can buy in this round, but they've got to start picking up some rounds here on the CT side. It's looking a little bit miserable. They need to get started now. I think Vega, if they win this, this is just too far of a lead. Look at 
for this. Again, taking control of the stairwell. Chopper and Hutchie keeping control of the sewers. Here's a boost up for you. There's Cajun, but he doesn't want to stick there, stick around too long. I mentioned a couple times the big time player Chopper has been phenomenal, along with Mir in this in these these uh, qualification stage, I guess. The new legend stage. Yes. MSL very close alone. He still picks up the kill, tries to fall back and with a grenade in hand. He's gonna get caught. Really one of the flashes way out there. AZ is sneaking around our back, so that could be a huge play. If he has the timing down perfect, he's almost got it against Mir, and there's nobody else there to catch him out either. Mir has the bomb, so this is very dangerous at the moment. All the way up on the bomb side, JL's gonna go down, and there's the spray coming through. So yeah, just a, a little bit of timing there again. And it works out brilliantly for North. Chopper is all alone with about 35 seconds. It does feel at times like Vega gets ahead of themselves. Like they, they only have like, you know, the, the one track mind of always, always going forward. And they get really, we've seen it a couple of times where they've taken the B bomb site and the bomb isn't even there. And they've just gotten ahead of themselves and the team gets spread out. This time it's towards the A site. They get that one kill. They continue to push forward and gain ground, but their team is not together to take advantage of it. That's what allows North to get back into this, that flank from AZ. Vega not even considering watching their flank until it's just too late. 13 to 8. But still, you mentioned the, the money of Vega Squadron still very, very nice. They can have another strong buy here. Yeah, makes a huge difference. I mean, the, for North, they at least survive with a lot of members, so I think, four alive in that round. So that obviously is going to help their bank. Right now, 13-8. It's still a little bit too soon to call, although you have to worry about the fact that Hachi's on 20 kills, Kashanda on 18. So, I mean, those two players are starting to really step it up right now. It's going to fall all the way back. He does not want to challenge this. So, slightly slow round coming out here for Vega, at least for a moment. At least for a moment. Chopper's going to work his way around the smoke, looking for some of those boosts. He's got his eye exactly... I think that was Cajun who was boosted up there momentarily in the previous round. They're gonna go for one of their own. Ooh, and I think Valdi, I don't know if he spotted it, but they spammed at him. Force him away. Looks like Vega's uh, end goal here is kind of the B bomb site. Mir is so passive towards playground that it doesn't seem like he's gonna do too much pressure towards that A bomb site. Kashander just watching the underpass. Chopper, JR, and Hutchie are just kind of sticking around and waiting for the for the call to just go. I'm not surprised that they're playing both Config and Valda on the bomb side itself and not not Config. At least some of the rounds a little bit more aggressive over and long, because I swear in the past that's worked very well for them. Chopper's gonna be sneaking in, trying to see if he can maybe catch someone off guard. He's all the way in the bomb side when he picks up the kill. Config gets one in return. Valda's gone down there's Config crouching in. He goes for the attack again. And Haji's gonna be able to take him down. So two on three here. Very aggressive from north, I feel like, in some of these three threes and now Cajun and AZ, can they turn it around? It's gonna be hard with this position from Kashander. There's the flash, AZ's looking for it. Kashander not peeking whatsoever, waiting for the info. I think AZ, I don't know if he sees him, but he's waiting for some kind of response. It's not coming. Great patience from Kashander being shown here. And AZ's trying to bait it out, it's not happening. They're toying with each other, and all the meanwhile, the bomb is ticking down low. Here's the move. He knew he was there, but he can't win the fight. And Cajun, again, just left to back out with this op. I still have, I, I, I really want to question Config going for the third fight there. Because that's a 3v3. Yeah. He's down on the slope. I realize somebody else could come in from the L bend and try and flank him, but just buying time, I feel like isn't going too well for North right now. They, they sort of, like rather than try and slow it down, they just continue the fight once they're, with it, once they're there. Yeah, again, I mean, tough scenario. That's a great kill onto JR and moving back. I think part of it is. Like this is where yeah. I want him just not do anything yeah you're, you're not wrong that, that definitely is an option i think it's just the nature of his play style that's that's what you're going to get because we yeah. always yeah. We, we always compliment conflict on the fact that he is willing to take fights and be aggressive and sometimes he seems like the only one from north uh you know we do sit in that luxury position where we get a compliment him for being aggressive when, when it suits our purpose and we also gotta you know say he did something wrong yeah that's, that's what i love the most about this job most <laughs> it's the hindsight <laughs> Well, we'll see. North going actually very aggressive this time, and it, this might be all on the line here. This might be the last round they get a chance. Flashbang, they'll weigh in. MSL does open it up. The spray is in. He almost gets it. AC with the backup of the leg shot, not really killing him. JR is in a lot of trouble right now. Backup is going to be called for. Hachi there to save the day. 
Oh my god, an unrelenting action going on over here by the playground and Chopper having himself a fight with Cajun B. This this round is all over the place. Oh, this is bonkers. That's great to see how this round opens up. Cajun with the AWP with an off angle. Baldi, meanwhile, has gotten a crazy position. Is Chopper going to be aware of it? He's an underpass. They haven't left yet. And Baldi can essentially cut off any attack towards the B bomb site. So Vega's got to make a decision here. They have just under a minute remaining in the round. They've got to be so cautious. You want to talk about Sharks. Config is now lurking up towards Long. He's on the hunt. He's trying to find information. Valdi's in a very tough position to clear out. And Cajun's rotating over towards B. So slowly, they're actually corralling Vega exactly where they want them to go. They have all this information. JR's clean charge, though. They do line up, so that's pretty much the end of it. Valdi with a great triple spray down there. They do all clear for it. I thought maybe JR was going to be the one peeing that tunnel with the AWP. But that is a great position. So 14 to 9. That was that was a bit of an explosive start to the round here. I'm so, I'm shocked that JR comes out of this alive. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously going to be hitting himself a little bit for missing that initial shot. I mean, great job to recover in this 3v3. MSL lived far too long. Well, and, and AZ, I guess, technically. Yes. But they, they just had way too much time in their hands. And then this is where it gets so tough. Very, very difficult position to clear out as you go over. Well, here we go. We've seen this buy before, haven't we? FaZe will remember it for a long time to come. Four MAC-10s. And it's going to be a rush, and Cassandra gets absolutely nothing with it. And there's a jumping headshot onto AZ. He's a bit confused, and he's falling back. Now the off is going to get taken down. Way too many bullets coming at him. Oh, my god. These MAC-10s are being used like AKs. North are just getting utterly wrecked in this round. Luckily for AZ, they line up for him. Otherwise, they might lose the round. <laughs> they might lose it anyway. Archie, what are you doing? Picking up a quad kill with a MAC-10. All of them headshots. I cannot believe it. At this point, don't even pick up the AK. Just use the MAC-10. This is so far out of control. North just were not ready to handle, again, the pace. Not ready to handle the, dub, the jumping MAC-10 headshots either, apparently. <laughs> How could you be expected to? Somewhere on Twitter, everyone from FaZe is just saying, we feel you, boys. <laughs> He's got 28 kills, man. Hudgy's, Hudgy's gone out of control in this game. Almost dropping a 30 bomb. Convix managed to find the right spot. Does he see it? I think maybe he did, and that's a really bad sign for Haji. He's got the time to play this game if he wants to. So he can try and bait it out. The smoke is obviously going to help him a little bit. Now Convix inside, just waiting for the sound. He's got to walk through. Doesn't even worry about the fake. Sprays it in. That's maybe a little bit dangerous. Convix in a lot of trouble, oh. but he gets a headshot last possible second. Haji denied the ace, and you have to feel for him that. That probably should have been their round. Yeah, I feel I, I don't even know what to say about probably, but certainly at the end there, that fight looked like it could have very easily gone his way. Huge win for for North in that. They absolutely needed that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't call this a win, Moses. i <laughs> Why why is he so I just find it curious that he's like not confident that that's actually where he planted. It's like he reconsidered where he possibly could be, and that almost bought Hutchie the time. Yeah, that could have been very dangerous. Tactical timeout here for Vega Squadron, just trying to make sure that uh, they can get the focus in to clear out the last two rounds. Maybe looking for a MAC-10 run boost next, who knows? I think at this point, I mean, Vega has a very important decision to make because Hutchie got four kills with a MAC-10, right? So he's got as much money as you could possibly want. They're just deciding whether they want to buy and what they're going to buy. And they do, in fact, go for it because, I mean, he had uh, Hutchie had 6,800. The rest of his teammates were sitting just over... 3,000, yeah. which isn't going to be a great buy for the other four members, obviously. But they're happy to do it anyway based on the logic that North don't have that much money either, so if you can break them right now, you can maybe just win the game right away. That's yep. a pretty good calculation, actually, to be making. 14 to 10, ladies and gentlemen, here. It's been a really rough second half for North, and it's not going to get any better at the beginning of this round as MSL does go down right away to JR. Good opening pick with that AWP. Still, Vega is pretty much all over at this B bomb site. Everyone is lined up. Shander taking over the stairwells all by himself. Hachi, JR, and Mir, they're just watching for their flank. They say the only, the only real damage we can take right now is if someone's pushed up towards A and they have all the information. And they're going to go clear it out. So now deciding to head back towards the A bomb site. Okay, Jin's got that long covered. Gonna miss the shot though, a little bit of a shame for him. That would have been one good way to get back in the round is to get, I mean, the early information is still worth a lot and they can they can at least use that. 
but just getting the kill and running away is always going to feel good. Valdi, he gets spammed down. So does Kashander. Six on Kashander, 25 on Valdi. I don't know if he spotted the bomb, but Config is the only one at this B bomb site at the moment. And still, Vega, this is one of their slower paced rounds. They haven't decided where they want to hit. Valdi's at the A bomb site. There's a boost so that Cajun over at the sign post can be. They didn't see anyone. Information. Yeah, they haven't seen anything. Now they're starting to rotate back towards the B bomb site again. Archie, can he land the good Molotov though? That's a big question. He's got one and it's already going to be in by the barrel, so they don't have to check that. That in itself is really good news. Config bit of an off angle here, tries to get the shot in and he actually does get it right through the wall, taking down Haji and now he's just waiting. There's only 13 seconds. The bomb is already being planted and they stop it from going down. Kashenda gets a kill. Valda with a return, but the bomb is planted here. Vega, if they got killed trying to get onto the bomb site, that would probably have been it. Now Cajun's going to be on the high ground, then he must win at least one of these fights to open it up for his team. He's already trying to sneak it in, hasn't really seen anyone yet. He's just going to make the jump down. What a madman. Now the rest of the team is on, and he's going to try and swap it out for the AK. Cajun getting a kill and goes for the spray. Mir takes him down for the triple, and that will be it. 15 to 10. Vega Squadron absolutely locking that down. And they've done it. They've broken the economy. Now we go back to that round that they lost, but they got the four kills with the MAC-10s. This is great, and it's unfortunate for Cajun because he had to be on like the aggressive side of that retake. He had the only kit for the team, so he had to make sure that he had to get into the bomb site. so he wasn't able to use the AWP, had to switch it out for a rifle so that he could actually try and pull that off. And I think a good uh, illustrative round to try and explain why retaking without grenades is also a little bit rough. Because, yeah. they, you know, if they... If they could have, at least someone could have maybe flashed Cajun in when he sort of jumps down, a smoke towards Elben, like any of these things. Yeah, something, right? They just didn't have any of it. So, yeah, they got shut down completely. Vega continuing to impress here at the major tournament. And honestly, yeah, this is just solid. There's been some, there's been some obvious mistakes for them, but they seem to mentally be right in the game. Like, they don't, they don't sort of crumble from those mistakes. They say, all right, let's do it better next time, you know? Definitely good news. Yeah, or or just, you know, mask it with with a Mac 10 rush. Yeah. <laughs> that round that, was that was wild, wasn't it? <laughs> that was. I'd rather we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna be seeing it more and more come out. They've they've reinvented the game. Nades out. Default. Vega obviously not wanting to get punished by anything and here's the first thing that can stop them in their tracks is this shotgun in the stairwell and it's usually been Kashander clearing this out all by his lonesome so it makes him pretty susceptible to getting dropped by a mag 7 blast yes indeed north fighting for overtime they need five in a row just seems very unlikely at this point Vega have just uh, got a good solid hold in the game right now the weaponry obviously does not inspire that much confidence either. Some deep grenades falling in now from Vega, just making sure that there's not, you know, a rogue scout or something in place somewhere. You don't want to even have any kind of questions about that. It looks like North are starting to slightly fall back on the map. So Vega getting rid of control and they still got some grenades left. Look at this though, being, uh, having a very nice system cl to clearing this out. We saw that pop flash out of North in the first half to great yes. effect. And here again, they're doing it They've shown us the aggressive side, obviously, and here they realize this is no time for a mistake. This is no time to forget any of the steps. They've got Cajun in position to have a fast flank. He's starting to hear footsteps, and they've got AZ with the CZ. Be careful, there's the timing he's dropped. Cajun is now pouncing with the shotgun, but remember, he's got to get so, so close to make this effective. And when does anyone from Vega Squadron turn around? He's running up. They still have not quite heard him, but he has to get even closer. There's the first shot opening it up. JR gets him right in return. Valder showing up. MSL goes down. It's a massive trade test right now. And Valder's going to be dropped as well. Conflict with one kill. Looking for the headshot. If he goes down, that's the end. And Vega will make it through to their next round here. Conflict goes for him, but he's going to get shot in the face. Mir to take him down. And that's 16 10 in favor of Vega Squadron. An absolute celebration on their part. Another big victory here for this impressive team. 29 kills on Haji. Listen, there's still a lot of questions about this team in terms of their map pool, in terms of how many maps they can play like this when you get into the best of threes, but this team is showing that they're legit. They've got a couple good maps. Overpass, obviously, one they're familiar with. Mirage is good for them as well. Hats off to, to Haji. Had a really, really quiet first half outside yes. of that 1v2 clutch, but the second half was all him. That was an incredible performance from all of the Vegas Squadron players involved. We're going to head to break, and we'll hear what the analysts have to say when we